Hi guys, Hello. welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be showing you a full external and internal tour of the Swift 486 Edge um, motorhome campervan. So let's start at the front, follow me. Right, so this is the 2022 um, Swift Edge 486, um, which we spent two weeks in this, um, this lovely unit. It's a big 2.2 litre engine, diesel. Uh, it's very, very hungry on petrol. Um, it's cost us about £100 to fill it based on petrol prices in August 2022. So if you follow me around, I'm going to show you some of the features. So the first thing you'll see is it comes with a set of chocks to level it because naturally, as it sits on, the, on a flat slope, the, the back end is higher than the low end, so it kind of runs down. So we've always put the chocks on and lifted them up at the front. The first thing you see uh, on the external side is the electric hookup point. All the other utilities are on the other side apart from the electric, which understandably when you see the inside, you will understand why they've done it, but it's a little bit inconvenient when you are connecting all your, all your, your accessories up and turning your gas on and things like that. So you've all, you've all got these um, windows which are basically sealed from the inside. You've got your, your door hatch, retractable step which is alarmed when you try and drive it when the step is actually out. Uh, it's not an automatic, you have to manually push it in. A lot of the newer camper vans and motorhomes have retractable steps that you push a button inside or as soon as you start the ignition it retracts. This one doesn't, it's manual. You've got your vents there for your, um, your oven and your fridge. You've got your gas heater and your water heater which is under the back bed which we'll show you when we go inside. So that's pretty much to show you on this side. Um, as you can see, there's an un a window up there in the upper bed cabin, which we'll show you from the inside. There's an awning light, which actually comes on when you unlock the doors, and you can also activate it from inside as well. So on the back of this unit, it's actually got a bike rack. Uh, this was, you don't get this by standard with the model, the high company that we hired it from actually put this on for us. Right, so starting from the back, um, this is basically access to the garage, which you can actually access from the inside under the bed. The garage. The garage. Um, as you can see, it's not huge, uh, but it's managed to fit everything in some, you've got with things like, like a camping table, you've got some barbecue logs. That's um, where the chocks go as well when yeah, we're the not chocks using them. There, the electric cables go in there, things like that. The chocks come in their own little bag as well. It has locks on it, so if you're out and about park it in a car park, you can lock it. This one is where the gas canister, and we're actually keeping the uh, Elson Blue for the toilet in there. It's got two in there, one's active and one's a standby. Um, you can actually get these replaced, so the fill-in hook is on the outside and you can just go to a garage and fill one of the refillable bottles up. Um, which I think if we ever bought one we would probably do that rather than having refillable bottles. Um, they're actually strapped down so they can't move when you're in transit. This is my least favourite compartment. So this is basically where you change the toilet cassette, so when you go to uh, the old Kazi, this is where it drops into. And you pretty much lift this handle, pull this out walk to the bin under this pipe, pour it down the Elson point, um, fancy name for an outside toilet, and wash it out, put it back in, put your bit of Elson blue in, two capfuls usually, and then push it back inside and it locks into place. You'll see us empty that many times in our vlogs. Yes. To be fair, it's not that bad. It's, very com it's quite convenient. And then the last one is your fresh water um, tap. So basically you pop that off, Put a hose pipe in and fill it up. I think it holds, was it 100 litres? I think so, yeah. Uh, although we never seem to be able to fill it in any quick time at all and it seems to run out very quickly. Um, and that comes with a security lock as well, for obvious reasons. So I'll just show you around the front before we go in. Uh, so as you can see, this was on hire from yorkshirecoastcaravans.co.uk. If you uh, contact them, um, mention us so they know that uh, you saw this video. And then Nick's going to show you around inside. Right, let's move into the cabin. Welcome. Right, so this is a standard Fiat Ducato um, van with obviously the back, the back box is completely different. There's many different variant motorhomes in this kind of design and style. It's a very basic dashboard. It doesn't have any kind of sat nav. We've actually put, put that one in ourselves. If you check out our video, you can actually find our, our day one video we can actually find out where we got this from some of them do come with a sat nav but not this model. yeah this is the this is the entry level model it's quite basic uh, it has multiple usbs here it has a cigarette lighter to power any sort of sat nav equipment and then we've got extras for the grills and things like that it's just a bog standard radio there's nothing flash about it or anything it has got aircon which is invaluable uh, there was many days on our trip 
that um, we basically sat in the front with just the aircon on, didn't we? Yep. Um, nothing much to show you, lots of storage space. The handbrake's on the right hand side. Um, both armrests are adjustable and come down. So when you're driving, it's quite a comfy drive. Um, and then up here, you've got basically an over cabin light if you're basically sort of setting up on a night or you're putting on the uh, the windscreen window things very bright as well that. you've got your rear view mirror which lets you it's actually quite useful given the fact that it's a van you can see really properly see out the back there's, there's some storage under there there's a um, glove compartment there uh, there's a i will actually show you um it's actually got an integrated clamp for ipads and things like that so if you lift this up and then somehow, there we go, put in your iPad, lock it into place and then lock it and it fixes it in that position. And then when you want to put it back down, you just fold it up. Now we actually used that once and then we went to the, um, the suction, suction mount on the yeah. back. So that's our preferred method on this particular trip. Um, nothing really else much, it's a manual system, it's a six gear manual. Um, as I said, it's basically very diesel hungry. Yep, a couple of cup holders down there. Yep. And then a little bit of um, storage down here for your bottles and, and stuff. Right, so the one thing that's actually been completely invaluable on this unit as well is every single window and Skylight has fly screens and there are actually flies in here now. So I'm going to shut this. Um, these, these are already down. They actually have little clips on them so they can attach to the blinds or on a night you just literally lift them up and if they're blackout blinds and on the daytime, you just pull them down. They've actually got a catch setting on the window as well. So you can actually put them on a single notch or you can basically have them swung wide open. Most of the time when we've been down in Cornwall, we've had them wide open and we've had the fly nets down and locked into that position. Um, it's actually got two cigarette lighter positions, one there to power the 12 volt TV and then one under this seat at the bottom that if you chose to have your TV on that side or you were running an inverter or something like that, so here you've got a three pin socket. I'll explain a little bit about the electrics when we go further around. Um, but here, your 12 volt TV is your non is non-standard to this model. You have to provide those yourselves. The well, aerials we, and things like that. We are, got it on the higher though, we didn't provide Yeah, they that. provided it in. The the um, the aerial sockets, they're all provided on, a, on the standard model. But the TV, as, a, as we just said, is basically something you have to put in yourself if you just bought it factory, factory fit, uh, factory manufacturer spec. The cupboards have all got these little anti-locks on them and there are nine cupboards this size. Some of them have got shelves, some of them haven't. You can actually take them out as well to give you sort of extra storage if you've got larger items to store. Um, there are nine of these, two of which are kept for the kitchen, above the kitchen units, which we'll show you in a second, and they're for things like food and plates. Um, but here, I'll not open that one because it's going to fall out. But there we go. And then up here, you've got your, um, your over cab bed, which actually is on um, hydraulics so and a set of ladders so you can basically have these connected to here so if you've got kids up there on a the night and then it's also got a guard so you can pop that up and hook it on so it comes to this level so the kids basically won't fall out of bed or roll out of bed on a night when you're moving you can either keep it in this position but it shortens the height in the cabin or you can push it up and then there are little nylon straps to hook it in place should the pistons ever fail and it wouldn't sort of smash somebody's head in so this is a six berth unit, which so as well as sleeping six people, it can actually carry six passengers. So two seat belts there, two there and two in the front. Um, each of the seats has got limited storage underneath them and we'll go around each one and show you what we've got. This one is by far probably the biggest one. I just move the remote. They're on pistons again. So that's pretty much all the empty space that you've got for storage. Now you might think, there's not much storage in this unit, but we thought that and we literally rammed every cupboard and we still had lots to spare. This one's not usable because your fresh water tank is under there. So you can't really use that at all. This one has got limited storage. If you can pop it around the frame where the seats actually anchor into place. And there you can see that you've got your water pump, which we'll show you in a second. This table will either fold away or fold flat down here. And this can either become a single bed that way or a double bed or a king size bed this way. Uh, is it king or is it double? Uh, I think, well, I think it's a bit bigger than a double because it can, it it's goes a out, there and side. out there. So yeah. it's kind of a bit, it's a big shape. But on our trip, we literally had this configured as a single. We had the two kids up there and we had the back section. Um, 
So yeah, this table can either fit here or it can fit at the back on the wall, which we'll show you when we get around there. But if not, on a night time, it actually forms part of the base of the bed. And then there are cushions in the wardrobe that pad out the seats when you fold them all down. So the unit has a standard fire alarm and carbon monoxide detector. Obviously you're cooking with gas in here. So you obviously do need to sort of pick up fumes in case there's anything wrong. Um, it's got a fully functional microwave, which runs off mains power only. Again, when I explain the electrics, I'll explain how they work. You've got a full three gas um, cooker which is activated when the lid is down so the oven won't actually work while the lid is down so if you want to grill something um, or cook something in the oven the lid has to be up whether you're using their rings or not here you've got a little chopping board which you can basically cook your dinner on and things like that and then with the extra space there it's a pretty big kitchen now when we were when we did our trip we actually took an air fryer and plugged it into the socket there which actually used quite a lot of the kitchen worktop folding this back down like that uh, the little air holes there are actually for the central heating system and again when I come onto the electrics I'll explain a little bit about that. So in here you've got a full oven and a full grill and your three rings. So left for cooker, right for grill and then um, it's basically a full functional oven. In here and again all the cupboards are on locks. You've got a set of pans and then at the bottom you've actually got like a, a flap cupboard and it's quite goes quite far back actually that one. You can get quite a lot of storage in there. The next one is the food cupboard uh, and your cutlery drawer. So that's basically on runners. All your cutlery in there. You've got two shelves for your food. And then you've got the wheel arch at the back, which actually does reduce your cupboard size a little bit, but not too much. Uh, we managed to fit food for five people in here and it was absolutely fine. Then you've got your fridge freezer. Um, everything again is on cap motion captures. So if, if you are moving, it will basically stop things popping open. So to get the fridge, you push the button down and in there, you've got a little freezer box with some ice um, and it's nicely blue LED lit. I don't know why that has some kind of special effect, but um, it just does. Um, plenty of storage, plenty of trays. It's basically like a standard um, under cupboard fridge in a house, it's a little bit smaller maybe. Um, it actually runs on mains power. It will run off gas when you are packed up off the grid or it will run on battery if you were basically driving from side to side. So we can switch the battery there, uh, but because we're hooked up to the mains, I'll put it back. Um, last night we were actually parked in a cub pub car park, we had no electric hookup, so the fridge ran on gas all night. Um, and it's actually silent, you can't actually hear when it's running as well, which is a very strange thing because you always think, is it actually working? But it does work, it takes a little bit to warm up, not warm up, cool down and get frosted when you first start it up, uh, but it's been invaluable for us. Right, so your skylights, double width plastic, so it's almost like double glazing. Um, doesn't offer much sound protection, but it's great for ventilation. It lets the heat out when you're cooking. Um, you've got your fly screen, or on a night, you've got your blackout blind. We always had it running when we were in Cornwall with that on, so no flies could get in. And both sides will open. One thing you've got to remember is you keep them closed when you're driving, because if the wind gets under, it could rip them off. And there are two of these. There's one at the back and one at the front. Uh, there's also another one in the bathroom, which we'll show you when we get there. Above the kitchen cupboards, Everything that you'll notice as well is LED lit, uh, so it's all low, low powered. Plenty of storage space for your cups, saucers, um, teas, coffees, things like that. So fully functional microwave, it only runs off electric uh, uh, mains hookup. Um, again, like I said, I'll explain all the electrics when I get around to it, but it's pretty much a, a standard sort of mini microwave. It's fully functional, it does defrosting and things like that. It's anchored in place, so you never have to worry about movement. At the back half, there's actually uh, this is made up into the bed configuration at the minute, but it actually has it actually is very similar to the um, the seats at the front. Uh, we'll show you a bit of footage on this as I'm as I'm speaking now, basically of how it looks when they're in sofa mode, or what we call it. Um, under the seats on each side, you've got lots of storage on that side, lots of storage on that side. On the left side, it also gives you access to the garage as well, rather than having to go outside and open the flap. These cupboards, again, very similar to the other cupboards, but they don't have the separating shelves in. Um, again, we were worried that we wouldn't have enough space for clothes, but we had absolutely plenty. And then there are another four of these here. Curtains we never used because all the windows, again, have all got blackout blinds or mesh or just open window. So if you are a family and you want to get changed, on the, and it's in sofa mode, as long as you've got your blackout blinds up, you can pull your privacy curtain across, change your undies, change your dress, whatever, and then um, pull your curtain back. And then in an evening, if you've got a family, yeah, 
pull it across and you've got like a... Mum and dad have got their own privacy. Yeah, privacy. This is the wardrobe. So the first thing you think is, ooh, I'm not going to get many clothes in there. However, during the day, what we were doing is we were storing all the bedding equipment, all the bedding on the top of the bed up there and keeping it down. So all this was completely empty for the two weeks. And there's a bar here for your wardrobe. There's an, an aerial um, extender on the roof. You just turn that, drop it down. Little symbol on it there shows you the direction that you're facing. So looking at out other aerials outside, I know that the aerials are pointing that way. So we've got the TV tuned with the aerial pointing in that position. So you could possibly live in one of these. It's got everything you'd, you would never need. It's got your gas, it's got your heating, it's got your electrics, it's got your toilet, it's got your shower. So I'm gonna show you the shower room now. So in here, you've got fully functional sink. The shower head actually pulls out and then goes up to the, um, the hook on the wall. Um, it's a bit of a bugger to get back in. You've got to push it back down in the slot. You could actually replace this with a, a proper shower head, uh, but it actually acts as a tap and a shower. Let me just get this back in. There we go. Um, you've got an under cupboard unit here, which seals. And then you've got things like toilet rolls and cosmetics bags in there. You've got a shower curtain that actually comes all the way around here. So if you're in the shower, the toilet doesn't get wet, the sink doesn't get wet, your toiletries, your toilet roll and your towel, which will be hooked here, doesn't. Your electric switch is there. You've got your skylight again with your fly mesh. So in here, you've got a fully functional toilet, which you can actually rotate round. So if you're a big guy um, like us, basically you're not sat with your knees on the wall. You can just turn it that way and sit with your knees this way. Um, it's basically just a standard um, chemical toilet. You've got a little flap here that when you've done your business, you just drop the flap. Everything drops into the Elson box. You push the little button and it rinses it down. When you're finished, push your handle, shut your lid, turn it back. Little light comes on if it ever gets too full. That's happened a few, few times with us. Yes. So we've had to um, lock the bathroom door to stop the kids using it. Plenty of space up here for all your cosmetics. We put things in little baskets to stop them from rolling around, which um, we've actually found to be invaluable. But as you can see there, it's got like bottles and things like that. So I said earlier in the video, I'd explain how the electrics work. This was the one thing that when we decided to rent this, we couldn't find any information on YouTube about. So when we came in, we had to learn it from scratch. We wasn't prepared at all. The so first thing, under this side of the bed or under this side of the seat, whichever mode you've got it configured in, is a, uh, a gas, electric, heater, and water heater, all integrated. Uh, and it's all controlled by these panels here. So first of all, your three pin sockets, your UK pin sockets will only work if you're connected to your electric hookup. Everything else, lights, uh, microwave won't work either unless you're on a, an electric hookup. Everything else, your lights, your USB sockets and your 12 volt car volt sockets will run off the internal leisure battery. So when you're in here, what you do, first thing you do when you, when you uh, if you start your ignition, everything shuts off anyway. Um, but you must remember you must, you've got to turn your gas off before you drive because that doesn't shut itself off. First thing you do, you turn this on and then you push this little button here which activates the water pump. So if we were to, were to run the water now, you would have no water because the pump's off. If I were to push that, the pump comes on, you can hear it pumping in the background and the taps start running. That runs off battery. It doesn't require you to have uh, a main hookup for that. The levels here, there are four levels. Each one basically um, shows you a quarter of a tank of fresh water. The waste one on this side, basically as that one goes down, that one goes up. And then outside underneath, there's actually a valve that lets you drop all your gray waste, which is basically sink water, shower water, uh, not your toilet water, that's your black water that's emptied in a, a chemical toilet point on park. This side here is where you control um, your heating. So this one is your heating. So we've got it set to 19 degrees Celsius. Um, we move across to the next one. That's our hot water. So at the minute you can either have it off economy, which to be honest is a waste of time because it actually only warms it to very, very lukewarm, hot or boost. We have ours on hot and it always keeps hot water on hand. It takes about 30 minutes to be able to get some hot water and then it's really, really hot. It's actually scalding. This one tells it what, what type of fuel to use. So by default, it will be on gas. So your heating and your water will come from gas. When you're connected to an electric hookup, um, or a mix, you can actually choose a mix of two different ones, more gas, more electric. We always have on EL2, which basically means it's running purely off the electric and it's not using the gas. And then the last one 
is basically um, I think is your fan speed so if you have your central heating on you can either have it on high or you can have it on eco and these little black vents down here and there are there are vents all over in the toilet down there under the bed that's where the hot air blows through when you've got the central heating on so there you go that's our little walk around of the swift edge 486 i missed one thing the little bin on the door yeah which is a bit rubbish to be fair but it it's all right, all right. keeps I mean, coming up we've only emptied it about four times because we've had bin bags on the floor yeah. instead so uh, if you've got any questions or anything like that and you know you want to know some things drop us a comment below we'll try and answer it if you want to see us like we said um use this van we've done lots of vlogs go check those out we went out to cornwall to the Cotswolds up here in Yorkshire. Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln as well. Um, we had five people in this van for two weeks and we managed pretty all right, we to survived. be honest. We survived. We survived. First couple, you've got, to, you've got to have tidy people. You've not got tidy people, it can get on your nerves basically. But after three days, we all kind of got used to how it operates and we were putting things away. We weren't leaving bowls and cups out no. and things like that. Well, a couple of times we did. And we had a, we had a routine, yeah. whoever cooked, the opposite person cleaned up. Well, I filled the toilet, emptied it. Yeah, if you did a number two, you were the, if you fill it, you swill it. So uh, thanks for watching that um, little tour. Um, drop us a comment below, hit the like button, click the notification bell. And uh, like I say, if you've got any questions, drop us a comment below. And if we can answer it, we'll answer it. And um, I'm sure there'll be other people watching this who may be able to answer as well. We're not experts. We, we did this video because we found, we found that the Swift 486 Edge was, other than sales videos online, nobody really gave you a tour. Um, so we thought we'd sort of share our experiences. Uh, we're not experts, but after living in it for two weeks, we know pretty much a lot of the, uh, the bugs and workarounds, don't we? Yeah, so thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next vlog. Bye for now. Bye.